Somewhat regularly, clients will be telling me that all of a sudden they noticed that their dog had started limping. At first they thought maybe it was a minor injury, but it didn't go away and now they've brought their animal in to see me and sometimes, unfortunately, these situations are a lot more serious. I'm Dr. M, welcome to BMC. Today we're going to be talking about osteosarcoma. It is the most common primary bone cancer in dogs and unfortunately it is aggressive. Join me today, we will be covering common symptoms that you might notice, how we diagnose this, the treatment options we have and everything that you need to know about this nasty cancer. So join me, you'll learn something today. So osteosarcoma accounts for about 85% of our primary bone cancer diagnoses in our dogs. This is a disease that most commonly impacts older, large breed dogs. Some breeds that have a specific predisposition include Boxers, Dobermans, Goldens, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, and a few others. It's most common in older dogs, say around seven years of age or so. However, there is a secondary spike in adolescent dogs that are around two. If your dog is under 30 kilograms in weight, they are less likely to ever be diagnosed with osteosarcoma, and it's pretty rare to diagnose it in a cat, but it can still happen. Osteosarcoma is a malignant bone cancer. What this means is that the cancer will start in one location, usually a long bone in the legs, and that it will quickly and aggressively spread to the lungs or other bones in your pet's body. Body. The initial tumor starts because of abnormal production of cells in your pet's bones that are responsible for breaking down old bone and producing new bone cells. As the tumor grows, it destroys the normal healthy bone and replaces it with cancerous bone. The exact cause of why this happens is unknown. We do suspect there is a genetic component because there are breeds of dogs that are predisposed and that get this cancer at higher rates than other breeds. However, we can sometimes also see osteosarcoma form after trauma to a bone, sometimes after implants have to be used in a bone, after bone infection after radiation therapy. All of those situations are pretty rare, but it can happen. And as I had briefly mentioned before, osteosarcoma most commonly begins in long bones of the legs, more commonly in front legs than in back legs. And we have a saying in veterinary medicine that it's more commonly away from the elbow and toward the knee if we're looking at the location of the tumors in those leg bones. However, it's also possible for osteosarcoma to occur in the lower and upper jaw bones. We can also see it in the ribs or other bones in the pet's body. The most common symptoms will be a limping or lameness on a leg. People will often assume that their animal has arthritis or that they play too hard or have a soft tissue injury of some sort. We can also see swelling around where the tumor is located and it's often a fairly firm swelling. Sometimes patients will present to me because the cancerous bone is weaker than healthy bone and the leg has actually fractured that means it's broken. We also tend to see loss of muscle mass on the affected limb. And because this is an exceptionally painful disease, we tend to also see animals that just aren't feeling all that well. They might have changes in their behavior. They might have changes in their appetite, lethargy, that sort of a thing. So if you are noticing these sorts of symptoms, especially if you have a large or giant breed dog that is getting older, you absolutely need to see your veterinarian promptly. Don't put it off. And it's also important that at that first visit that some x-rays of the affected limb are done. Sometimes we can be tempted to say, well, we'll just give some pain management, rest for a couple weeks. If it doesn't go away, come back and we'll do x-rays then. But in this sort of a situation, because this is such an aggressive tumor, 
I would recommend that you have x-rays done at the first visit. This way, if we do suspect that osteosarcoma is causing the pain, then we can get started on treatment immediately rather than delaying by a couple of weeks, which can lead to worse outcomes because it gives more time for this aggressive cancer to spread. On these x-rays, there are some characteristic patterns that we will see in the bones. We often refer to these bones as looking kind of moth-eaten. They can also have kind of a starburst pattern because the bone has gotten larger in diameter, which is part of why there's that firm swelling. Now, if we see this characteristic pattern in an older large or giant breed dog, we will say that it's osteosarcoma until proven otherwise. The x-rays might be sent to a veterinary radiologist for confirmation. If you live in an area that experiences a lot of fungal infections, that can complicate matters because fungal infections can look similar. It can also complicate matters if the tumor location is in a less common spot or if your dog doesn't fit kind of the typical size and age presentation. So if you have a young dog or a small dog or a cat, then it might be a bit more challenging to make the osteosarcoma diagnosis. In some of those situations, we may take samples with a needle or a biopsy from the bone in order to confirm the diagnosis. That's generally not needed for most patients. For most patients, we make a presumptive diagnosis off of the x-rays alone. If we do have a presumptive diagnosis of osteosarcoma, staging to look for spread to other parts of your animal's body is absolutely crucial. At a bare minimum, we check a blood work and urinalysis to see how organ function is doing. And we also would do x-rays, at least three views of the chest in order to look to spread to the lungs. Now, unfortunately, because this is an aggressive tumor, around 90% of patients will have spread to the lungs by the time they are diagnosed. Now, in a lot of those situations, they may have what we call micrometastasis, meaning that the spread to the lungs is so small that we aren't able to see it on x-ray yet. If we're not able to see any nodules in the lungs, then we do have a lot of treatment options available to us. If we do see large nodules of cancer that have spread into the lungs, unfortunately that is a very negative prognostic factor and it will likely dramatically reduce the treatment options that you have for your pet. Sometimes we will consider a CT to get better imaging of the lungs. It does cost more money and it isn't always locally available, so that may or may not be part of the medical workup. And depending on what we're seeing, on the x-rays and the blood work, very rarely we might consider uh, additional testing like an ultrasound to look for cancer spread to parts of the abdomen, but that's less likely. Most often this tumor is in bones or in lungs. Dreaming dog. Next, let's cover the treatment options that we have available to us. And at the end, I will be covering some exciting new treatment that seems to be coming down the research pipeline. So the mainstay for osteosarcoma treatment is amputation of the affected limb. Now this does a number of things for your pet. First and foremost, it removes the source of the incredible pain that your pet is feeling. These tumors are so painful. The other thing that it does is removes the risk of that leg breaking as the tumor spreads and weakens the bone more and more. Many dogs do adapt surprisingly well to having three legs. They tend to do even better if it's a hind leg because they carry more of their weight on their front legs. However, there are going to be some patients where amputation isn't an option. Often this is because of other medical issues that those patients have. Often it's 
significant arthritis that would make weight bearing on the remaining three limbs challenging. This is even more of a concern in giant breed dogs. About two weeks after the amputation of the limb, we then start chemotherapy. This is because around 90% of dogs will have had small metastasis of this tumor to other locations in their body, usually the lungs, even if we can't see it on the x-ray. And what the chemotherapy does is it slows down the progression of those metastasizing cells. Most commonly, we use a chemotherapy called carboplatin. It's given every three weeks for four to six treatments. Your veterinary oncologist can discuss what's best for your individual dog. There may be some other chemotherapies considered, there may be a slightly different schedule considered. It does vary a bit depending on the individual. It's important to remember that our focus in veterinary medicine is on quality of life. In humans that are receiving chemotherapy, they often feel incredibly sick for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time. In veterinary medicine, we use different doses of chemo because our goal is different. We care more about the quality of the life, where in humans their goal is cure over anything else. So in veterinary medicine, our pets generally handle chemotherapy quite well. We do use medications for issues like nausea. They might have some GI upset. It usually lasts for a day or two, and your friends and family would likely have no idea that your pet is undergoing chemo because our goal is not to make them feel horrible. Our goal is to extend their quality of life as best as we can. As I mentioned earlier, almost all patients will have spread of their osteosarcoma through metastasis by the time they are diagnosed. Now, if we do see nodules in their lungs, moving forward with amputation and chemotherapy is most often not recommended due to how advanced their cancer already is. Yeah, what you need on your bed? Oh, good dog. Thank you. Now I can have my feet out. You put my one foot asleep. You were laying on it. You're a good dog. So if your pet does have visible lung metastasis, we will be recommending a palliative care plan. The primary component of this must be incredibly aggressive multimodal pain management. I cannot overexpress to you how painful osteosarcoma is. So what I mean by aggressive pain management, I mean non anti-inflammatory drugs, I mean gabapentin, I mean opioids. Sometimes we use things like ketamine. If you are consulting a veterinary oncologist, we may also use radiation that's targeted at the tumor. There is some research showing that in some patients this reduces the pain of that tumor. We may also use a drug called a bisphosphonate. These are a class of bone hardening drugs that were originally used in women who are going through menopause to help keep their bone strength as good as possible. Bisphosphonates will often reduce the pain that your animal is feeling and they can help to keep the bone a bit stronger to reduce the risk of the bone breaking because of the cancer weakening the leg. Now with all these treatments that we currently have widely available, unfortunately the prognosis isn't great with osteosarcoma. It is often treatable for some period of time, but let's cover the median expected prognosis for palliative care versus surgery alone versus surgery plus chemotherapy because surgery plus chemotherapy does have the longest life expectancy. Now, it is also important before we discuss these things that you understand median life expectancy. What that means is that half of the patients will live longer than this amount and half will live a shorter time period than this amount. This life expectancy does depend on how much the cancer has spread by the time it's diagnosed, how old the patient is, if they have other medical issues ongoing, if they have other medical issues that make certain treatment options not really available to that individual patient, their temperament, how much they can tolerate being in a vet clinic, how well they tolerate chemo, and so on. When we pair surgery 
with chemotherapy, the median life expectancy is around 10 months or so. If we do a leg amputation without chemotherapy, this does dramatically help to manage pain, but it doesn't slow down the spread of the osteosarcoma to the rest of your pet's body, and so their life expectancy is not as long. With amputation alone, the median survival rate is around four to five months. If we are only doing palliative care, the median survival is one to two months. All of that said, when animals do go through surgery and chemo, people are generally very happy that they have done that and they generally report that they would do it again in the future. And that extra time can be so wonderful and so valuable and I'm always glad when people are able to have that time with their beloved animals. However, I also see a lot of situations where treatment with surgery and chemotherapy just isn't possible. And that might be because of other issues that animal already has. It could be because they have too much arthritis and they weigh too much that moving around as a three-legged dog isn't likely going to work out very well for them. It's also often because of budget concerns. And in those situations, it's very common as GP veterinarians that we are sending home a couple of weeks of aggressive pain management. And even so, we often see those dogs come back in a very short time period because we are just not able to properly manage their pain and their quality of life is decreasing. And so when we know that we have a situation that we're unable to treat, where pain is not being managed, we do have pretty frank conversations about euthanasia in those sorts of scenarios. I did promise earlier that I would cover what the future may hold for osteosarcoma treatment and there is some exciting news in the research world, some new treatment modalities that are hopefully coming to be more broadly available in the future. This new treatment modality is in the realm of immunotherapy. We are using a vaccine to try to stimulate the dog's immune system to attack the cancer cells in a more efficient fashion. Over 300 dogs in North America have been involved in clinical trials for this immunotherapy vaccine at this point. There is currently one peer-reviewed study that has been published demonstrating the findings of these clinical trials. And what we're seeing is that the vaccine is stimulating antibodies that are able to go and bind to the cancer cells to help your dog's body get rid of them and prevent them from being able to spread. This immunotherapy is showing a dramatic increase in the survival rate out one year from treatment. Dogs that do not receive immunotherapy have about a 35% chance of surviving to 12 months. Dogs that do get the immunotherapy on top of amputation and chemotherapy have about a 60% survival rate one year out from treatment. And the median survival that's currently being reported is 478 days. That's amazing. We are also seeing in some of these dogs that metastatic tumors are actually shrinking, which is remarkable. So if you have a dog that is diagnosed with osteosarcoma, talk to your veterinary oncologist about immunotherapy. My best understanding of where we are currently at is that there are a handful, like less than a dozen centers in Canada and the US that are licensed to use this immunotherapy on dog patients. So it will depend on where you're located and budget and travel and all of those things may or may not be an option for your individual dog, but it's absolutely worth asking about. One of the researchers has created a company called Theragen, and my understanding is that we are currently waiting for this immunotherapy vaccine to go through the USDA approval process, and once that happens, then Theragen would hope to be producing this immunotherapy so that it's accessible to more patients. I will link to Theragen's website in the video description so that you can read more about it if you are in the situation where where your dog has osteosarcoma and you are wanting to find out more information. Well, that was a bit more of a serious video topic for today, but 
I've been asked to cover osteosarcoma in the past and I thought I absolutely should do that. I appreciate that you are taking your pet's health so seriously. If you have a video topic you'd like me to cover in the future, please comment it down below. I love to hear from you. I put out a new video most Fridays and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!